Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct lecture number 44 and today we will discuss serial asynchronous reception in PKT NAF microcontroller. So let's start our lecture. In last lecture, we understand how one can write in a semi language uh, code for serial asynchronous transmission and we send uh, letter A at 2400 bars per second or 2400 bits per second, uh, right? And so we will write a code uh, for receiving. If uh, on other side, if another microcontroller is attached and it is also receiving that transmission, so it will, there will be some code written for reception purpose. So we will write that code and we will also enlist the number of staffs that you need to be careful and that you need to follow to write this code, right? So we will uh, be starting, we will be writing the code and we will be also mentioning the steps to require to complete the code, right? So very first step in transmit in reception would be uh, to load the value of 90 hertz in RCSTA. Remember we discussed register RCSTA and we dis uh, discussed if we feed 90 hertz, that means we are configuring the, uh, configuring the device for receiving uh, purpose for receiving synchronous, sorry, is receiving asynchronous serial mode, right? And two bits are higher here for continuous receive, right? And one is for serial port enable. So both things are happening in this uh, one line. So what did we are going to do to load this value, move little to working, nine zero hacks, and we will feed it into RCSTA register, right? So remember in this specific step, we are also uh, turning on the serial port enable, which is the part of serial port, which is the part of receiver register, serial port enable. In transmission code, we will we were making uh, extra step to make it high, but this is already happened in this specific uh, mode. So now we do not need to write the instruction bit set file uh, RCSTA comma SPIEN because it is already happened in this line, right? Okay, the next step, if we are, uh, it is uh, something which we have to be very careful. If we are only receiving in this uh, uh, microcontroller, we are not transmitting, right? So uh, there, there are two possibilities. Your microcontroller may be receiving and also transmitting. If uh, it is transmitting, then of course you have to feed two zero as we have sent, as, as we have discussed in, tran uh, in the transmission code. But right now I'm just, assuming that if your device is only receiving, it is not transmitting, right? So you have to feed 00, zero hacks in transmit status and control register. Why? Because you have to configure BRGH bit. It, is, it should be zero for low baud rate and that we are going to do in our course. So you should feed 00, zero hacks. If you don't feed 00, zero hacks, what is going to happen? You can uh, simply, uh, avoid this specific condition and your device may be configured for high baud rate, right? Or to avoid any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, confusion, you can simply make it always two zero. So in transmit status register, you will always load two zero hacks. So automatically last nibble would be zero and BRGH will be zero, right? And in case of RCSTA, you will always put nine zero hacks. So I will be putting move literal to working uh, two zero hacks, move working file, TXTA, right? Since I'm not assuming that this specific uh, device is also transmission, so I can make it zero zero, right? So uh, I have already made this point clear, right? Okay, the third step is to load the specific and appropriate value in SPBRG. Remember in last transmission code, we are writing the same uh, we are writing the co receiver code for same transmission code. So uh, we will be using same SPBRG value or same serial port border generator value, right? We calculated it equal to 25. So we will feed the same value. And if it is, uh, if this receiver is receiving some other uh, baud rate, so you have to calculate it as in the last video tutorial, we calculated and then we, we feed it, but we are writing for the same transmitter. So you will can simply write move little to working D 25 and then you can simply load it in SPVRG. So this is the step number three. Or uh, now we will come to step number four. So 
make the receive pin, which is RC7 pin. Remember, in transmission code, we make RC6, which is transmit pin, as output pin, because we wanted to transmit from that pin. And now we want to receive from this pin. So this is RC7. And by default, you know that every pin is input mode. Input mode. So by default, this is uh, already happened. But if you want to make, uh, if you want to make this uh, part of your code, so you can simply set bit set file press C comma R X pin right R X pin right so that is me that means you are just defining that pin as input pin because it from this pin you will receive right uh, you can also use RC six here sorry RC seven here uh, but it doesn't matter since we are rewriting the code for receiver so I will use R X word or R X keyword. Okay, the step number five will be to monitor the RCIF bit. Uh, and why we are monitoring it, we want to actually verify whether the last reception, which is supposed to be of eight bit is completed or not. And there is a specific bit, which is called RCIF or receive uh, intra flag bit of PIR1 register. This is the same PIR1 register for which we were using for transmission purpose, right? So we will also monitor one of the bit of this register, RCIF bit, right? Uh, so how you will test it, you will simply uh, use the same instruction, bit test file, skip if set, PIR1, comma RCIF. So in this step, you will monitor this RCIF bit. If it is equal to one, that means your last reception is complete. And if your reception is complete, so you are ready to uh, use the value of RCREG register. Okay, the sixth step is to receive the value which is received in RCREG register and how you will use it. Move RCREG, move file to file RCREG into another file register, let's say 00 hex. So now the value which has received in RCREG register is has moved into 00 hex register. So this is the simple code. If you want to uh, repeat this procedure for indefinite time interval, you need to just add uh, branch function across these lines, right? And you can repeat this procedure for indefinite time interval. Okay, that's it from the video tutorial. If you have any question and comments, you can post in comment section. Thank you so much for listening.